हेलो एंड वेलकम टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सॉल्यूशन इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल देन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आइकॉन फॉर द लेटेस्ट नोटिफिकेशन इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन एट जीरो फाइव वन मेमरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नाउ ऑल ऑफ वी नो दैट एट जीरो इन एट जीरो फाइव वन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर द मेमरी इज बेसिकली सेपरेटेड इन टू टू टाइप्स वन इज अ प्रोग्राम मेमरी which is called as a rom and second is a data memory which is a ram so rom is a permanent memory or it is a non volatile memory and ram is nothing but it is a data memory so normally we store our program or code in program memory that is a rom and we normally store our data into the data memory which is called as a ram so ram stands for random access memory and it is a volatile memory that means whenever you switch off the power supply the contents which are present in the memory will be lost but in case of rom it is a permanent or non volatile memory the meaning is whatever is stored in the read only memory that is rom will be retained even if we switch off the power so these two uh, types of memories are present in 8051 microcontroller now 8051 uh, has internal rom and ram now we have already seen that uh, the internal rom which is present in 8051 is of capacity 4 kilobytes and the internal ram is of 128 bytes but many times what happens is if uh, we are using some high level language for writing the codes then that internal memory may be insufficient Uh, to uh, write the entire code and therefore in that case we have to go for some external memory uh, interfacing and that is external memory uh, interfacing or what should be the capacity of the external in, uh, memory interfacing that we will see in the uh, next slides so now uh, we know that this is a program memory so code or instruction to be executed are stored in rom so on chip rom is 4 kilobytes so address of this 4 kilobyte on chip rom is from 000 to 0 fff this is what is the uh, address range for the inbuilt rom or on chip 4 kilobyte rom now uh, for uh, the, this rom or program memory there are two options possible that Uh, just now i have told you that if this internal program memory is insufficient then in that case we have to connect or interface some external program memory or rom okay so in that case we are going to use one pin of this 8051 which is a ea pin ea stands for the external access pin so whenever that ea pin is connected to the vcc or logic 1 then it is possible to access the internal as well as the external rom now we know that the 8051 microcontroller has a 16 bit data lines so maximum memory program memory it can access is in the range of 2 raised to 16 which is equal to 64 kilobytes now whenever uh, this ea bar pin is connected to plus 5 volt then this internal program memory rom of 4 kilobytes and the remaining program memory of 60 kilobytes is accessed from this external program memory so if you see the address initially it will refer to this internal memory that is from 0000 to 0 fff and once it is finished then it will be loaded into the external program memory whose address is from 1000h to fffh so total internal plus external is equal to 64 kilobytes of memory is accessed in case of 8051 if we keep this ea pin or external access pin is equal to logic 1 but if suppose we don't want to use the this internal memory then it is also possible that we may only access the external program memory that is rom of 64 kilobytes so in that case the address of this 64 kilobytes memory is from 0000 to fffh and in this case this ea bar pin or external access pin should be connected to the ground or logic 0 uh, 
so whenever you want to access only external memory and no internal program memory then in that case you have to connect this external logic pin or external access pin to logic 0 and whenever you want to access both internal as well as external program memory at that time you have to connect this ea pin to logic 1 so in this way uh, it is possible that we may access internal as well as the external program memory in case of 8051 uh, microcontroller so this is what all about the program memory or rom now we'll see about memory organization of ram uh, the RAM means it is a random access uh, memory. Now we know that in case of 8051, the total RAM available on chip is of 128 bytes. Okay, So that 128 bytes of RAM is basically divided into three different parts or three different sections. So the first section that you see is total of 34, uh, sorry, a total of 32 bytes which are from location 00H to 1FH. So, in the picture, in the diagram, if you can see, register bank 0, bank 1 with stack, bank 2 and bank 3. So, this uh, register bank area along with the stack from address 00H to 1FH will be allocated as a uh, general purpose memory, which can be accessed directly as a memory uh, locations then the middle one that is next to that that is from 20h to 2fh these 16 bytes of locations they are set aside for the 16 byte of bit addressable uh, ram so uh, detailed discussion of this bit addressable i will explain in the incoming slide and the total of 80 bytes from the location 30h to 7fh are used for read and write storage or what is normally called as a scratch pad memory. So these 80 locations of RAM they are widely used for the purpose of storing data and parameter by the uh, programmer. So this is what is the main uh, division of uh, RAM memory into three uh, sections. First section is of register bank and stack which is of 32 byte then next 16 byte is for bit addressable RAM and the next 80 bytes is for scratch pad memory. Now we will see what is this register bank and how we can access these register banks. So there are total 4 register banks that is bank 0, bank 1, bank 2 and bank 3. Now all these uh, reg uh, register banks they basically consist of 8 registers inside. So bank 0 having registers R0 to R7. Similarly, bank 1 R0 to R7, bank 2 R0 to R7, bank 3 R0 to R7. But the addresses of each of these register in each bank, they are different. So, for bank 0, the address starts from 00H to 07H. For bank 1, the addresses start from 08H to 0FH. For bank 2, the address is 10H to 17H. And for bank 3, it is 18H to 2FH. So, we can access any of the register in any of the bank either by the name of the register or by specifying their addresses. Now, whenever we want to select any register bank, then that register bank selection will be performed through the two bits that is RS1 and RS0 in the PSW register. The details of PSW register I am going to explain in my next video. So, RS1 and RS0 are the two bits in the program status word. Uh, by selecting or putting some specific bits on RS1 and RS0, actually we are going to select a particular register bank. So, whenever uh, I, we write RS1, RS0 is equal to 0, register bank 0 is selected. When we write 0, 1, register bank 1 will be selected. When it is 1, 0, register bank 2 will be selected. And when it is 1, 1, then register bank 3 will be selected. So, by uh, this is uh, how we can select a particular uh, register bank. 
and once you select the particular register bank then you can access these any one of the registers in that particular uh, bank now one more important thing is here in the register bank one it is written as a stack so basically uh, the stack area address of the stack area and the register bank one they are same so uh, it is not possible here to use the register bank one as a register bank and also as a stack as at the same time so either you have to use it as a register bank or stack memory so normally we use it as a stack memory but in case if you want to use this as a register bank one then you have to uh, specify some another address of this stack so uh, that is what is a little bit problem in this case that these memory locations they are basically shared by the stack and the register bank one uh, one more important thing is uh, if we does not set any psw bits then in that case by default the register bank zero will be selected and we can access the registers from r0 to r7 from register bank zero uh, so uh, that is what all about the uh, these four uh, register banks and the uh, stack section uh, in 8051 ram memory now the next 16 bytes they are reserved for the bit addressable ram so here is a picture of this bit addressable area so here you can see that from 20h to 2fh it represent the bit addressable area so total 16 bytes so 16 into 8 is equal to total 128 bytes they are reserved for the uh, bit addressable area or 128 bits now uh, here if you can see the addresses which are given to these individual bits they are uh, separate and different so this is what is a bit addressable area now why to use this bit addressable area so uh, in this bit addressable area it is possible to store a single bit that means whenever uh, we deal with some ports then and if we want to check the status of a particular port pin then in that case uh, it is not possible it is uh, not necessary to access the entire port and then go for a single port pin but here by using the bit addressable area we can store a single bit that is the status of a single port pin to any of the addresses and then we can perform some bit operations on that particular uh, signal so what are the different bit uh, instructions so for example set b is one of the instructions clear is another instruction or you may complement it like cpl and it anl so basically many operations can be performed and on that particular bit but remember that here we can access the individual bit in bit addressable area or we can access the entire byte also so that is also possible in this case so this is a very important feature of 8051 uh, microcontroller that there is a bit addressable area by which we can store a single bit in this uh, area and we can uh, check the status make it on off or whatever other operations can be carried out on that particular uh, bit so this is what all about the bit addressable area and the last portion is nothing but that i have already explained which is a scratch pad memory so scratch pad memory is nothing but it is a general purpose read write memory uh, which programmer can use if these register banks are not sufficient to store the data so this is what is all about the memory organization of uh, 8051 so guys if you like my video then uh, please subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends thank you thank